So how can we create organisational culture? Daniel? I think we need to start by saying what culture is, first of all. And basically, my favourite definition is culture is how we do stuff around here. <laughs> so it's and, and that's that's the kind of challenge is that it just kind of occurs in some cases. So do you think that most cultures are planned? No, not at all. I think in most and this isn't just in working environments. This is in families. This is in clubs, all those kind of things. You sure. develop a culture, right? I love that. Can you imagine planning your family culture before you have a family? Well, actually, that's I, genius. I, I would say if you if you look at the marriages that last a long time, yeah. they have kind of rules yeah. of like conduct yeah. and etiquette and stuff yeah. like that. I mean, I I'm, I run two businesses with my wife. That takes you know you have to set some boundaries <laughs> of how you're going to speak to each other and all those kind of things as well. And I think that's the key thing is that you're. You need to look at how you're going to operate, how you do things, how you speak to each other uh, and so on as well so that you can create the culture that you want. It can be done and I've seen it been done, but you have to start early because the bigger you get, the harder this becomes because you end up with a culture anyway. You know? Yeah, so you do. You always do. And you yeah. have to reset really yeah. hard sometimes. So I've been going through this with a small company at the moment and actually they've put a lot of time as a team mm. establishing like, what are we trying to achieve? What do we stand for? What What are our established values? Um, and it was important to do that as a team because they were already at a size where actually unless the team will buy into it, it just becomes yeah. another one of those platitudes that everyone Yeah, ignores. you have to buy in. Right. That's yeah. exactly it. Yeah. So can you give us an example of an organisation doing this? The, the, the best one always, because there's so many examples, is the Google thing where Google from the very outset said, we are not a normal company. We've got no intention of being one. And they they have all these different practices that instill the culture. And I think this is what you're trying to do is trying to go through and say, okay, if we're going to try and make ourselves an innovative company, what does that mean? We just need to come up with new ideas all the time. Okay, how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to give our engineers 20% of their time to go through and work on their own projects. That's that's culture. Or they say, we're going to give away free food. Why? Because it's a great benefit, yeah, but because it brings people together that wouldn't normally be sitting together. So those are kind of examples of you put some practical steps in place to try and instill something. You can't just say we're innovative and just assume it's going to happen. You have to do something to make that happen. Well, I work for a small beauty company and they had this thing they called the precious recipe, which was literally the, re the, the, the correct ingredients for the company. And it was a set of principles by right. which the whole company was run on. And I think when you see this very strongly ingrained, like literally I know the founders, whenever they faced any difficult decision, they, they'd all say, well, what does the precious recipe tell us we need to do? That's brilliant. You know, when you've got something like that that really enshrines it, that's, that's magical. And I, I can tell you it was an incredible place to, to, to work because those values were, they were enforced. They were, they, they were an actual thing. Like you could feel them when you walked into to this place. That rather authenticity than being, is really yeah, important. Yeah, massive, massive. So what about an example of an organisation getting it wrong? This is one of my favourites. So this was a massive UK telecoms company and they went, right, we are changing offices. We're fed up with cubicles. We want flat hierarchy. We're going to have open plan offices. No, no offices for the managers. And um, you're going to come in, sit in different places each day. You're going to work with different people. It's going to be amazing. So what happens? People are creatures of habit, right? They come in on day one. They Instead of having their desk set up, they have these lockers. So what do they do? They get the laptop and they set up in the same place every single day. Okay, <laughs> And then they start to get fed up putting their stuff in the lockers. So they start putting up pictures and stuff and, and just leaving their stuff out on the desk. So no one's moving around, no one's hot desking. <laughs> then the shocking bit was that the leaders went, I want an office. So they would just block book a meeting room for a year. <laughs> right? so, so then what happens is that that's their office. No mm -hmm. one else can book. It. And that that's the leaders not setting the culture appropriately. Yeah. And, it, and it, what it meant is that you can give people the physical space, but then you need to install, and this all comes from leadership, is to set behaviours, to tell people how it operates. Um, and if you do that, it works, but you need leaders to set an example from that point of view. So if you say, we're going to hot desk, leaders need to sit in different places every day as well. So, And there's some practical challenges. It's all very good. And then someone says, well, actually, um, I've got some sort of visual impairment. I need a big screen. How's that going to work? Have you thought this through? So you've got to go through the use cases to make this stuff work as well. So what's it most important to do to get this right? I think you need to think purposeful culture. It's not just letting things evolve. It's actually saying, exactly to, to Kieran's point, these are the principles and values that we're going to live by. This is the type of organisation we want to be. How do we create behaviours that achieve that? And then how often do we review that and make sure that we are going back and, and doing these things and living it? So it needs to be iterative and as well. it has to be led from the top down. Completely. Without that, it just rots really quickly on the vine. Yeah, I've seen it time and time again.